Good morning. Uh, Jana Edmondson here, and I'm going to take you through my process for doing uh, some open cut pours. Today, I am going to make sort of more earthy colors here, which I really like. Um, and so my colors, well, first I'll start with the panel, which I already kind of poured my base in because this is actually take two. <laughs> You'll never see take one, but I had a mishap and I had to stop. So <clears throat> anyway, here's my panel. Um, I pour into art panels. I really, I like them. Um, I don't want the paint to run off. It leaves a nice finish edge. If you get any paint on the edge, you can sand it, which is great, and um, resin it or spray it, whatever you want. <clears throat> It does take longer to dry um, because uh, the paint's so thick. I mean, it can take anywhere from, depending on the thickness, a couple days to a week. So just expect that, and you'll want to put it somewhere um, where it can really sit and be level. Um, my mixture for the paint typically is one part paint to two parts Floetrol, and then one drop of Dimethicone. I ordered that on Amazon. Um, so today I am using, these are Target brand uh, paints, so I'm using Blood Orange, I'm using Carrot, Deep Sea, and then also Dark Bronze, which is a metallic. And then I'm using a couple of heavy bottle, uh, bottled paints, no reason in particular, I just happen to have these and, and wanted to use these colors. So um, we've got the Prussian Blue, um, and then we've also got Burnt Sienna. For the more heavy body acrylics, the general mixture is one part paint to about three parts Floetrol. Um, you want it to be, like Anne Marie says, like warm honey. Um, and then for the white, I always use Artist Laugh Flow White, um, and you can get the big bottles at Michael's. So for this one, I actually added like a hair of the Prussian blue um, to make the background blue. Okay, I, I've already poured it in um, and moved it around and uh, what I do here is I generally pour some in the middle and I sort of move it around. Um, what I'm trying to do, the reason I do this is that I'm trying to, I, I don't really want my paint to go all the way to the edge. So, um, you know, the paint, when I pour it, will have an easier time moving where there's already paint and a harder time moving where there's no paint. So I pre-pour this so that it sort of tends to stay. Now, it is flow, so it'll kind of go, you know, if there's a lot of paint there, it'll push out because it wants to self-level a little bit. So, um, you know, that may happen. It really depends on how much we pour in here. Um, here is my open cup. It's just a plastic cup that um, I cut off the top here so I can pour into it. And so we will get started. All right, so I usually start with, um, you know, a little bit, obviously, of the color that's on my base. Um, I'll put that down there. Um, the first color that I pour in, because I'm not going to be layering, you know, like, a round of colors and then another round of the same colors. I'm just going to pour once for every color and so it should be in the order. So the first color that you're going to see coming out will be the bronze. And I really like that to be around the edge. So I'll pour in the bronze. And I actually, bronze, I may use it again in the middle just because I really do like the, oh, that was a nice big lump. Now luckily the lumps a lot of times you don't see them <laughs> at the end of the day because um, the paint is so thick. So that's kind of a bit of a blessing. All right, so then I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna do a um, little bit of the burnt sienna. Now sometimes I will pour white or you know the blue in between. Um, and sometimes I won't. And a lot of times, if I'm afraid the colors are gonna get muddy together, then I'll separate it with the white or with whatever color I'm using that's the lighter color. Um, but in this case, I do kinda want them to blend, so I'm just, I'm not going to use um, any of the white. I'm just gonna pour these, these guys in. So here's the dark blue. <clears throat> Here is 
the deep sea blue. And then um, we'll do the orange. And we will do a little bit of the yellow. I don't want too much. Yellow can really overtake. And then I'm going to just do one more bit of this. I really do like the, the glitters or in this case, the metallics. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on top. All right, there we go. It's already starting to come out, you can see, which is great. All right, so I'm just gonna lift it up a hair so that the paint can start flowing out and I'm gonna just start working it around. I'm not lifting the cup up at all. I'm, I'm really trying to make it like a smooth flow here. There, there, okay. All right, now, really pretty. All right, now I'm gonna pick it up and spread it out a little. And when you do that, you know, again, you can make it more symmetrical. And then also when you move the paint around, it opens it up, you know, so that more colors will start to come out. Now I'm not gonna move too fast because I really don't want the cells to stretch out too much. But we are just gonna move it a little to make sure it's symmetrical. And really pretty, really pretty combination here. Just again, kind of moving it slowly um, so that our cells don't get too crazy looking. I'm just trying to angle it so it kind of comes this way just a little bit now. Okay. I think that is okay. Um, yeah, I do. I like that. All right. I'm just debating whether I should kind of spread it a little more. I think I will. Just a teeny. Um, no, you know what? I like it. I'm afraid I'm gonna ruin it if I do that. All right, so I won't do that. Um, but I'll show you another way that you can kind of spread it a little bit if you need to. So if um, you definitely have enough room here, you know, if you, like I mentioned, I mean, the paints wants to kind of self-level. So if you um, move some of it away, like I'll just show you here, you'll see that it will kind of start to come out a little bit because it's gonna move to fill this in. And when it moves, it, it's sort of pulling the rest of the paint this way. So this is one way that you can move your paint, just a hair, um, if you want it you know, to move. Whether it's helpful if it's just like a small section you're trying to move. And, you know, conversely, if you need, if the paints come out too far and you need it to move in, you can actually pour paint in here and it will move your colors in that direction. One of my other videos shows that because it sort of overflowed a little bit. All right, so I'm just moving my blue paint outwards a little bit so that, you know, this starts to come in and, and fill in that space. There. Now you'll also notice um, I don't. You know, sometimes I'll use um, flame to drive more cells, and sometimes I will not. Um, I like to see how it all comes up first, and then we'll decide. Um, this is looking quite nice. I kind of I love the lacing in here. It's really pretty. Um, great. All right, so I am just gonna let this be for the moment, for the time being, and you know we'll we'll sort of turn this off, and then uh, 
I'll come back in a minute. I'm just gonna let it sit and do a few more cells. So I am back and uh, I started filling in these corners over here and I just, I thought I'd leave the last one just to show you how I do it. And I just take a spoon and I mean, literally it's as easy as just pouring um, the paint in and then using a palette knife to sort of spread around or the edge of the spoon just to spread around. Um, and go right up to the edges. Okay. So you can see, um, you know, it's spread out a little bit now that I have my paint around the edges. Um, it shouldn't spread out <clears throat> anymore. It's really just gonna self-level at this point. Um, and, uh, and that's it. I didn't do a flame. I don't really think I'm going to for this one. And that's okay, because I really like the pattern. So let me take you down and show you the patterns here. All right. So here we go. Um, this is all that bronze. And you can see it really, um, it sort of, you know, did layer in the way that we put it in. So bronze, burnt sienna, dark blue, and then the, um, the blue, oops, I'm over here blue, orange, and uh, and then the yellow, and a little more bronze in the middle. So, um, I mean, it almost looks like a watercolor painting around the edges, doesn't it? It's really cool. And what I love are these cells, oops, right there, where it's like you have every single color in there. Isn't that neat? Okay, and here where you can see some of the colors really mixed together and the blue um, and the light blue kind of form this really pretty brownish blue. It looks very watercolory. I mean, these almost look like stones in a puddle. So, and then here's this other side. Um, which generally, if there's any side, you know, of this that I'm, I would take the flame to, it'd probably be this side. Um, but honestly, I don't mind it. I think it, it looks really cool. So, hope you enjoyed um, and learned something. Feel free to visit my Facebook page, uh, Jan Edmondson Photo and Art, and JK Edmondson Photo and Art on Instagram. Um, and you know i'm happy to answer questions or if you want me to do another demo with specific colors just let me know all right have a great day